So let's talk about the last 12 week year I had. It was focused on losing weight. I used my index card planner to create a strategy and then execute that strategy. It was all very DIY and there was a lot of things that were really good about it and a lot of things I do differently. So I wanted to just share with you because usually I come away at the end of my 12 week year using index cards, whether it was with growing my YouTube channel or building out my Etsy shop, I feel really good at the end and I feel like I understand what worked and this card deck it definitely I'm still kind of processing it and I just want to share my thoughts with you I didn't really talk too much about this last 12 week year as I was starting I did work week one or two over on Instagram and in the stories and share my habit tracker with you and then on week two it's kind of like this is really personal and I don't want outside voices to deter me or like make changes and that type of thing and plus out, out apart from those like voices that might make me go on a different path it also felt like I don't know I wasn't doing everything right I was definitely failing a lot and it didn't feel good and I didn't like talking about it so I'll talk about it now <laughs> now that I feel much better and actually it's funny because we just got back from vacation and I was feeling so good you guys I went through Disneyland without eating sugar I mean I don't I don't know how that happened but it did I was feeling really good and then my husband got sick on the way up and I caught whatever he had so I apologize if my voice goes in and out at the end of the 12 weeks the most important thing is that I feel better and I'm more active and I'm making much better food choices and while that path wasn't the plan that I initially set it out for of how I arrived here, I don't think it would have been possible. I feel like I would still be in that lazy, tired, swollen, and just kind of sad state that I was in back in December. So all in all, this worked out really well. In setting up the DIY system, it was kind of like my YouTube 12 week year where I wanted a mentor I wanted a group I wanted a program because that just would be way easier but at the same time I didn't know what was going to be effective I wasn't sure what exactly was wrong and where I wanted to put my focus and so I ended up just taking the route of I'll just try what's worked in the past and see how I go from there. So I first started my 12 week year off with doing a lot of journaling. And I think this was before week one too. This was like all of January and at the end of January is when my 12 week year started. And so I took the time to journal in the morning, journal throughout the day, I even used note cards and wrote down what it was that I was eating and how I felt afterwards. I wasn't making any changes necessarily, but I was just noting how things made me feel and then was able to take that and move into the 12 week year method that I've used in the past. So what I do first is create a mind map and it's usually pretty messy. I use just like I did here with writing down the notes where I'm just taking a piece of paper, scrap piece of paper, whatever it is, and writing down all of my thoughts. And then from there kind of putting it into different categories. And then what I did was transfer that over onto the plan divider, which is at the back of your 12 week year. I'm not going to talk too much about setting up like the logistics of setting this up, but talk about what worked well and what didn't when it comes to each card and how I mapped out my strategy and how I executed it. If you're interested in those 12 week year setups, if you're like, I don't really understand how you use this index card, how do you use the scorecard? What is a scorecard? I have videos on that and I'll link it below. I'll also link these templates. They are just a free PDF that you can download and print out. I'll include that link too. You just cut these out and it's really easy to get started. I shouldn't say it's easy to get started because um, there's you have to do everything yourself. You have to write things out. I do think that writing out the affirmation, writing out your to-do list, writing out your scorecard is really good. I, I write down, when I was creating my mind map, one of the biggest things that was I felt like really important was brainwashing myself. <laughs> to make it so that I would focus on losing weight, getting healthy, being more active. And then also, apart from the focus, just believe that it was possible. So the act of writing things out by hand, I think is really helpful, just apart from the obvious benefits, I shouldn't say obvious, my perceived benefits, or my the benefits I perceive from these cards is that they're, you touch them, there's something about touching it that I feel like I own this plan that's mine, and I'm working through it like a I have a little bit of control over it. And then also it's something that I can see. It's 
just like there's colors there's my handwriting and then also the the idea that it's away from my phone so there's no distractions I get easily distracted by notifications coming in also like all the different videos I can watch on YouTube and so it's nice to just be apart from that at least for a portion of the day when I'm really focused in on what I value what I want this is where my attention is and plus you can't write a ton of stuff there's not really long to-do list you're just writing one action item out at a time on your cards when I was mind mapping I noticed key areas or categories within the idea of um, losing weight and I then took all of those tasks and moved them onto index cards some of them I transferred over actually the majority of them I transferred over to index cards that were that acted as habit trackers. I have a history of not doing well with habit trackers because in my head, I'm setting up the habit tracker because it's going to cause me to do those habits, to take action. When in fact, it very rarely causes me to do it. If anything, it I walk through my day and then I observe when I'm not doing it and then I think, oh no, Jen, you didn't do it again. And it doesn't make me feel good. And then the next day, the probability that I'm going to take that action is lowered. So habit trackers in the past has not been super effective for me, yet I still did it. While it didn't hold the same idea or I didn't get the same benefits of what I thought the habit tracker would do, what it ended up doing was allowing me to see how it was that I was moving throughout the week and what was effective, what wasn't, and what was important. I guess what was most important and where I should put my focus. It also helped me recognize that there are cycles in life and that life happens. And apart from just outside forces of life happening, we as women go through cycles of our moods and our bodies and all that fun stuff. So it just it helped me open up my eyes that not every day is going to be the same and you shouldn't expect the same actions of yourself every day, especially when you are the one that's in control. I don't have a boss or somebody, you know, going over me and saying, why aren't you at the gym? Go to the gym. You're supposed to be at the gym. So what I use, the tools that I use were this index card system. So there's 12 weeks. Each week has a different divider. And then I printed out about 40 cards to begin with. And I did that at the beginning of the year. I actually have all my 12 week years. I have three for this year that are printed out and ready to go. So when that year comes up, I don't have to like do the whole setup. I have everything all set for myself. So I had those cards already cut out and that's what I was using to take from the plan divider, the mind map and transfer it over to the cards. I also had highlighters. I tried to make it a very functional card deck as I have in the past and not a lot of like artistic pieces into it. So I use the highlighters just to draw my attention to different categories. And then I also just use some like, I don't know, fun ways of organizing the habit trackers. Apart from the card deck, I was also tracking using my Garmin watch and then the Garmin Connect app, as well as Chronometer. I've used both of those tools in the past effectively. And I don't typically like outside like the iPhone apps and it's part of the reason why I love the card deck is that it eliminates the distraction and the need to be on the phone, but there are certain things that the app, I, I mean, I really don't like, I don't like relying on this and I don't like, there's a lot of things about the watch I don't like, but I do really like that it, I can check like an estimate of what my heart rate is, an estimate of my sleep, an estimate of the calories that I expended throughout the day. It was definitely helpful. Um, the Garmin Connect app too, I really like it because it, it gamifies it a bit, which makes it fun most of the time. Some of the time that was kind of annoying. And then also um, the Chronometer app is definitely something I'm not going to use on a daily basis moving forward, but it's something that definitely I opened my eyes as far as allowed me to see where deficiencies were without having to do any kind of major blood work. I could just see in my diet, oh yeah, you weren't eating, you had no potassium that day and that's why you probably didn't feel great. So anyway, those were the things that I used, the apps as well as um, the index card planner. And then one of the important parts of the 12 week year is to make sure that you have time for what it is that you want to do. So what I did was after going through all the tasks that I had, the habits and what my goals were, I I then blocked off time in my Google Calendar. And that was using a specific color and it was something with that color, it's kind of like a grayish color. And I feel like that 
in my mind allows me to see that as just something that's going on in the background so that if I'm scheduling an appointment during a gym time, I can see, oh, you can adjust this, but you're supposed to be at the gym. So let's go ahead and look through my cards. I'm going to show you each card and talk a little bit about them. Okay, let's go ahead and go over every card that's in the card deck for the 12 week year that I set up using the fitness goal. So at the top, you can see for each of these, these are task cards that are habit trackers. I have the affirmation that I set up. Oh my gosh, I should show you. So just to begin with, I have my, this is one of the most important parts that I would say if you're going to do any of this, even if you're not using the, the index card planner or like setting anything up like that, I would set this up for yourself. A vision board using index cards as well as an affirmation. I like this one because I liked I, you know, you can just write these out, which I did to start off my YouTube journey, but I like the idea of that you're including visuals too that just remind you of where it is that you're going. So anyway, these are the two cards that even if you're doing nothing else, I think are really effective because you can hang these in your kitchen, you can put them in your wallet. Again, there's something you touch and feel and you can see every day. So anyway, I don't want to forget those. So then I rewrite the affirmation in a way that is just shorter. These are habit trackers that I set up at the beginning of my 12 week year to get started with. I did six weeks. So I already had that plan and then actually with that in mind let's go ahead and go back and look at my plan so there's the 12 weeks this is the plan divider so this is what I set up after I created that initial mind map so my goal is over here in the middle and again the first one was really messy and I was able to identify these different core areas that I wanted to just focus on when it came to the tactics and the actions that I was going to take and then this up here is as I was going through it I was like oh this is what I'll do. These are my goals for my 12 week year. I'm gonna focus on improving my sleep and my nutrition at first. I'm going to focus on strength and then I'm gonna focus on just like general activity, being a more active person. And this was my goal to be able to go paddle boarding in April and fit into my neoprene because neoprene is expensive and it's too tight for me right now. I have no excuse but to get back into shape and be able to paddleboard with that instead of buying a larger size. So these were the key areas. Looking back, I can just tell you right off the bat that as far as establishing good habits and making things effective, you needed more than two weeks to focus solely on nutrition. So I might have gone back and done this differently where I would have only, well, actually, I know for a fact I would have gone back and focused only on sugar to begin with and not just like this nutrition piece for the first couple of weeks and then focusing on strength actually that was kind of effective for a short amount of time just so I can make a point of figuring that stuff out um, but then once I hit the 20,000 steps this definitely fell behind so again I wasn't making this a focus long enough where it stuck around it took a it stayed as a habit so those are just a couple early takeaways to give you but that was my idea that's where the plan comes into it so I broke those down you can see each week where I was going to put my focus and then I made habit trackers around those different areas also pulling in so you can see some of these are just like legit habits like dishes done by seven and there's also go to the gym there's do you know bar walk these snacks refer to like short bursts of activities that um, I've been reading a little bit about and then supplementation things like that were more habits whereas there's other Others that are more project based like um, by a measuring tape that was how I was doing my lag I'll show you that in just a second I also have note cards that I'll show you in a second too actually more than a second but you get the idea so I've got my fasting card this is the habit tracker I was going to start with fasting as far as nutrition goes to just get my self like into a level point again I'm not recommending you do fasting I'm just showing you how I set up the card this was that focus within it I put my supplements and tracking food and then at the end of the week I was able to go back and give myself a score there was you know five out of seven five out of seven when it came to tracking food and taking supplements general rule with the 12 week year is that you want to get an 80 percent in order to feel like you've made a success or you're moving forward in your goal here's another habit tracker with movement I'd set myself up to only going to the gym three days a week I set it up one through seven as not necessarily that I'm going to the gym on Sunday Monday Tuesday but I'm just doing this three days of the week which was kind of confusing I guess I would have set that up more of like a week or done a different way of setting up this habit tracker and I've seen a lot of people I shouldn't say a lot I've seen a couple people that I follow that use this card system that um, have created really beautiful weekly spread and I'll link that video too. Uh, this is how I was tracking uh, as part of my daily just to see especially when I was focusing on nutrition this was really important because based off of what I was eating I could see a very 
noticeable change in my waist. This is really embarrassing and probably too much information for you. So just don't look at that. <laughs> but it was just something that was effective. So you might do like the scale. So this is sleep and notice there's an 42 little boxes for my score. This is too many things. That's I figured that out on Saturday when I was going through this. I was like, I don't like this because none of it is necessary for my end goal, which is to just feel well rested because I knew early on that if I didn't get good sleep, I tended to eat more and to make poorer choices. I think that's just like common sense. So I just, the end goal was to get good sleep and turning on the red lights in our boat at, you know, as it got dark, it's just like a tactic that you could do to get into that space. It wasn't like necessary. Buying a measure tape. So you can see this is a project. I had this shuffled in front of a specific date that I would just, it, I would know to go and buy the measuring tape. And I didn't have to think about it until that day came and I purchased one. And again, like I used what I had. I don't have a scale on the boat and I don't really have room to keep a scale. So I just used the tape to just figure stuff out. Um, so here is all the lead. This is all those actions and tactics that I was going to take to get to reach my goal, which is measuring the lag, which is just in measuring my waist. And then I had some questions that I could think about at the end of the week for my weekly accountability meeting on Saturday. And then I kept a score, which is 48%. And it felt really, really lame. I did not care for that. And then I took notes on the back about like what worked and what didn't work. So when I was going over it, I could see no popcorn or candy. You can see like looking back at all of this as I'm just, I wish I would have woken up sooner to this idea of that candy, Jen, was your number one problem. And yeah. Uh, so anyway, here's more. So the sleep went from that long list into, did I go to bed at nine? Did I wake up at 5.30? Did I stop having coffee? That was one of the things that I did need to track because I noticed that when I did have coffee after one o'clock, I would wake up in the middle of the night. So that long list went to the shorter list. So I did make adjustments and that was really easy. That was just taking out my sleep card and then making a new one. Again, more fasting. You can see I marked it differently each week, but these were the days that I missed it and I'd cross it off just for my brain to know it was like Tuesday and not Monday. See, I wasn't very good about tracking my food. Anything that I knew I wasn't doing well, I didn't want to do. So I didn't do. That's the thing like with this habit tracker, it's like, well, if I wasn't doing well, I wasn't going to track my food when I should have been because that would have given me, anyway, I don't, I want to talk about it. <laughs> so here's again, movement. I would just redo this to make it look better. But again, do I want the gym to be those dates? Because there was days when the kids were sick and the idea that you're shuffling, again, going back to the whole idea behind the index cards, you have one card that would say gym and it would be shuffled to a Tuesday. If your kids are home sick for that day, you then shuffle it to the next day and not have to think about it. So I don't know, you know, I really don't. I made notes too, like when it changed and what I did differently. Uh, week two... You can see some just like basic project cards too. I did a fitness test, which was atrocious. My youngest son did it for me. And at the time he'd read The Warrior Kid by Jocko Willink and he was really into working out. And then he saw mom's fitness and he was like, oh no. I also created food cheat sheets, which was a project of mine. And then this was one that I didn't do. I was reading Alan Carr on quitting sugar. Uh, yeah. So I knew that was a problem. That was the thing that's ugh, so annoying. This was just a mistake because my February didn't start until at some point within this. So I didn't need to do bar every day. So I just made a change there. But you can see I also decided where on my waist that I was going to measure. I was trying to make it as uniform as possible. But I chose the waist mainly because the foods that I was eating, this is just something I've been dealing with for almost a decade now of of digestive issues. So anyway, sleep. Again, the score is not great. Not great score. But then this is also the fasting thing. I was like, this is not something that I like. Here's a project. And I had those cards already set up to a card for positive affirmation stuff, a card for movies, and a card for memoirs. And then I just filled that out on that date. Um, because that's something fun too. I could have done that much earlier, but I need to focus on the things that are not so much fun and then do that later on. I finished the Alan Carr book. I, I really like the his whole idea around, I don't want to say it, but it's, in, you know, addictions. And it, he uses this, this visual of the big monster versus the little monster. And I really liked the book. I did continue to eat. I, for like three days, I went without sugar. And then I started again. So... 
So my focus was bar, and that was something that I filled out the week before. I took notes on the back of the card, too, sometimes, not always, on my weekly accountability meetings. You can see, like, I didn't measure myself all the time, especially a lot of the times when I didn't measure or I didn't track my foods. It was days that I was not doing things well. So it would have been back to that higher number. So I didn't take any notes that week. A lot of this time, too, I was traveling on the weekends for sports-related stuff. There was freezing temperatures. <laughs> like, it was not the most ideal way to get into healthier habits. I mean, there's no perfect time. And if I didn't go through all of this then, I don't know how I would be behaving now. This is supposed to be 169. I know. You guys... This is just more of the same. I didn't finish my steps cheat sheet, but that was also something that was really helpful. I was doing that to prepare for the 20,000 steps. I mean, I don't have too much more to add. Like here, you can see as I was getting into the bar piece, I started to get really irritated. So I think I was pretty effective. And then I was just like, I'm tired of doing modifications. So I'm setting up these scorecards the week before. walking was easy. So just like when you're doing your morning pages, when you're going through the artist way and she has you circle for consistencies, it's the same thing here. I wish I would have taken better notes. But again, when you're not doing well, the last thing you want to do is like face the fact that you're not doing well. So some weeks I was better at that, others not. See, habit trackers are lame. <laughs> I think I stopped using habit trackers after the six weeks point. Mm, but I'm still tracking it in some way with my weekly check-ins. This is part of the fun card deck. I liked noticing synchronicities. I wish I would have made a better focus of noticing good things around me or positive things that happened. So here you can see with the more consistent gym space, my waist went down about an inch. So, I mean, even though I wasn't hitting everything on these cards, I was still making a lot of improvement. still doing my habit trackers. Oh, and then I added some journaling in here and there just when I was feeling really frustrated. <laughs> I think doodle journaling was actually the fun activity that I was doing for that week. I wrote this in one of the days that I was feeling frustrated. Some notes. These are projects, project cards, fun ahead. That's the what I did that was focused on fun. Um, a lot of it didn't have the activity, though, that I probably should have incorporated with the fun. Those were, like, a lot of sitting-type things. <laughs> so you can see I tracked my steps, and I put them along with this. This was, like, Julia Cameron in The Artist's Way suggests that you do your morning pages and then go for a walk afterward to, like, really ingest all of it. And um, this was more of, like, tracking my steps that I used for it there. Some journals with the little doodle guys. This is like my morning pages, which is nonsense. I didn't do any kind of tracking thing for week eight. I was kind of over the tracking stuff. I was like, this is silly because I was also doing it here. This is where my watch, I forgot my watch charger and it totally derailed me. And then that was like, oh, I can't stand my watch. Yeah. I went to Dancing with the Stars and I got to do their little quiz show and partnered with Harry and Riley, which was really fun because it's just Harry was one of those guys in the show that we were like, we want you to go home, but he's so sweet. It's a fun card. I was also sick that week. This was a big one. Listening multiple podcasts I was listening to said you can't outrun a bad diet. I know it's a really common saying, especially when you're listening to health-related podcasts, but that was definitely in my head that week. Then I started doing not as good with my step count. 
I just started to get sick of everything. Um, this is week 10 where I tracked everything. And this was taking all the data from my watch and then writing it out. And it's kind of fun to see it this way. It was fun to write it because I was looking at it and then putting it onto this card. It's just kind of fun to see the calories burned and then the effort that I put in. So like I got 15,000 steps, 17,000 steps, and I was still burning a similar amount of, you know, calories as I was when I was doing the 20,000. So it doesn't have to be perfect every time. This is a card that I'll talk about in a second, but this is really effective and it's part of the fun card deck. And then more fun, more tracking how I wasn't doing well. This is the week where I was like, I only do well if it's easy. And if it's hard or inconvenient, I don't do it, which is kind of obvious, but I just realized it in that week. And this is the week, just last week or the week before that, we went on vacation. And this is my steps during Disney. We were there Sunday and Monday, which is really interesting that my calories were so low that my watch is reporting versus when I'm adding. It's just, I know this is silly, but when you work out, like a real workout along with a high activity, it's like a difference of 500 calories sometimes. So I don't know if that's important, but it was just kind of fun to point, like pull those numbers out for myself. And again, just kind of rewriting things and figuring things out, just working through them in my brain just helped. Ditching sugar felt very rewarding this week. Anything that was easy was effective. And then really fast, here are just some note cards that I took. The steps cheat sheet was really helpful. It was something that I could just pull from if I was like, oh, I'm only at 5,000 steps earlier in the day. Here are some activities that I could do that would get me more steps. I have some notes on like food choices, on fasting stuff, food choices, things that would make things uh, easier on me when I'm in the kitchen for the kids and for Shane. Again, food choices, and here's those fun, just like finding, reminding me of ways that I could brainwash myself to focus on my goal. And I could keep these moving forward. I don't think I will, but I could keep them in my learning. I have the verses that I'm working through right now under learn, or I could keep these, especially the notes on food in front of food. So here are some things as an overview wrap up of what worked and what didn't work when it came to using the card system and improving my health. In next cards, going back to like high school and college, they just, I don't, there's something about them that just feels really nostalgic and like you're there to learn. So taking notes as I was reading books or I was doing research, if I had a question in the back of my mind, I would go and look it up and then take notes on the index cards and then file them in front of the learn divider. And that way I could easily access them as well as like recipes. Everything was just very accessible and in a note kind of space where I could easily, before I went to the grocery store, look and see what were the foods that I was supposed to be avoiding to feel better. And having that all in the index cards helped. Also, like the brainwashing activities <laughs> that I did, um, having notes about like shows that I could watch if I was feeling down or memoirs, that type of thing was really nice. And having it in that index card space, having the cards, even the habit trackers, as I was going throughout my day, being a touch point, the vision... <laughs> The vision board and the affirmation is just, it really helps me. It's like, I think Tony Robbins is the one that has, he primes his day and he has certain actions he takes in order to like be in the right state of mind to go forward and like accomplish his goals. That's what the vision board and the affirmation card do for me every day. And it just feels really good. And having those touch points, like being able to hold it and touch it was really nice. Touching the habit tracker didn't always feel good. <laughs> But it was, again, a good touch point of where it was that I should be. What also worked was the fun cards. Incorporating just fun into the idea of getting better and feeling better. And this idea that it needed to be hard or feel uncomfortable in order to be effective. I do still feel like I need to improve upon that ability where I should be pushing myself at certain points. I don't feel like I need to push myself every day. And the most important thing is that if I'm out there doing being active that's all that matters. And plus like adding in 
the artist way components with walking, being able to notice things around yourself, listening to yourself. It was all just very more holistic than, you know, you need to be doing 45 minutes of um, strength training and pushing harder and making that my focus. But anything, and not to say that that wasn't good because I learned, like I crave it right now to go to the gym and lift weights on the opposite effect. Uh, so like going back to the bar piece, I've always loved doing bar. I did like a bar training program during COVID and I am I have a background in dancing. So it's something that I've always felt like that's where I should be. And it's not something that I'm going to like ditch completely, but the idea that I was constantly modifying and moving around my boat in order to do a 45 minute exercise program felt horrible. I kept getting frustrated and yet I was still trying to push through. And so the idea that I would continue with something that was frustrating me is just silly. And then the nice thing about the index cards looking back is that I could easily just remove that index card and forget that it was ever happening. But because it was part of a habit tracker and a larger plan, I think that kind of tripped me up. I mean, most of the effectiveness with the cards was that I was, this is looking back at it because as I was going through it, it didn't feel like it was effective at all. The habit tracker didn't feel good. I didn't like noting when I didn't accomplish things because it didn't like, again, I just thought it would make me want to do the things. But what it was really effective at was looking back and seeing the patterns and seeing what worked and what didn't and being able to to be that kind of a third party looking down at myself and listening, looking at my thoughts, I guess, and noting them and being able to move forward. One like really specific thing that worked really well with the card deck was the selfie card. It's part of my fun card deck and this idea that you take a selfie of yourself every day. I did that. Some days I didn't because I either wasn't in my card deck to get the reminder um, or I didn't want to take a selfie of myself, but it was a really, really good way. And it wasn't even like full body selfie. It was just of my face. But because a lot of the things that I was dealing with was you can see like my weight gain in my face, but also you can see like inflammation or had a lot of issues with swollen eyelids. So I could see those effects. Plus I could see, even though I'd feel really good, like I go to the gym every day, I would do all my steps and I'd be eating better. I would feel good. And then I'd be like, oh, I can eat candy now. But then if you see yourself, you're like, oh, you still have so much work to do to get to your healthiest point. It's just a good reminder of reality. What I do differently moving forward, I guess, is instead of incorporating, and I see, I used back in like 2019 when I did my, I did a paddleboard race where you, you raced for, um, 70, I paddled, I didn't race, <laughs> where you paddled 70 miles in 48 hours. And I, did a lot of training leading up to it. Actually, I didn't do a lot of training. I did whatever I could because I was working crazy hours and homeschooling and doing all the things. But anyway, I used the card deck. I used Sidetracked Home Executives, my home management system at that time, and then just put in a card for bar, a card for SEP. And so if I didn't get to something, I would shuffle it because I had such a weird schedule at the time. And that was really effective. For me today, I don't know if the card would be moving forward where I could have the ability to shuffle it. I feel like it would be more of an appointment that I should set with myself and then make it happen. I also noticed that unlike my YouTube journey, even Etsy, I had moments where I had an evaluation card where I was like, at six weeks, you need to evaluate your progress and make changes. I even set it up so that I was only filling out six weeks worth of habit trackers at the beginning. So I had the ability to make adjustments, yet I didn't. And I don't know, it was because I didn't make it a priority to evaluate and give myself that permission to adjust the plan or what it was. But I knew early on that my initial plan of setting up those three or four like phases or three or four goals within my 12 week year, that that wasn't the real issue. The real issue was definitely sugar and that I should have put all of my focus and attention into it, yet I didn't. I just kept moving forward in the weeks, and you could see as I was getting towards week 12 where I was like, this is ridiculous. If I were to do it again, I would definitely make a point of saying, hey, Jen, if you need to change your plans, do it here. I would also do it with someone. I, 
Last time when I did the YouTube thing, I really wanted a mentor. I wanted a coach. This time I wanted a trainer. I wanted a program. Um, but what I really needed was someone to just be able to like talk things through with that would come at it maybe from a related or like a, an empathetic ear, someone who's going through it with me at the same time and who would have been like, Jen, you need to just cut sugar out. So that's one of the things that I'd probably do differently. I know I've talked to a few of you who do the 12 week year and have that weekly accountability meeting, like a true one with someone else. I think that would be really nice. I also think moving forward, the tracking, the habit tracker and everything I did with that, it's interesting because I don't know, I don't like the idea where I'm doing things twice. I had the information on my watch as well as in the cards and I don't know. I don't know if I would track it in that different way. I, like I said, I have mixed feelings about the habit tracker. Moving forward, I'm not going to do it anymore as far as the habit tracker. But I think during that time, it was really nice because even if I was observing it on my watch and seeing, oh, these are the days that I did well. These are the days that I had enough sleep. As I wrote it down too, it was something about just confirming to myself these are the things that things that are working and things that aren't. I would also now going through it again give myself a lot more grace and be much more patient with myself because again it was like if you weren't accomplishing everything to the T of what you had planned I just felt really bad about myself and I was still learning something I was still growing and I would not have would not be where I am right now had I not taken the time to put focus on those areas and I would have adjusted sooner I would have I would have stopped sugar sooner if I, and I did know better that's the thing it's like I just feel like there was a right time to stop like I stopped I'm on 17 day 17 of no sugar and I was having you guys it was so bad so this is a huge deal for me and the most important thing is that it feels easy so I have this little bundle of my 12 week year project of getting healthy I I kept my YouTube one I kept my Etsy one and I kind of want to throw this one in the garbage <laughs> because I just want to move on I want it I'm grateful that it's done I'm grateful that I did it and I'm grateful for the insight it provided me. Yeah, if you need more help with setting up your 12 week year, if you think, oh, Jen, I'm gonna go ahead and try this out, I have those other videos that walk you through how to do it. Um, and then, the, of course, there's the book that you can read. And then there's that free printable that you can cut out the cards and get started. Thanks, guys.